here with the Oak Book Public Library and I am back with another groovy story time all about my favorite feathered friend. That's right. The story time is all about flamingos. So let's read a couple books first and then we're going to do a very groovy flamingo craft. Our first book is called The Pink Lion all by Jane Porter. She illustrated it too and this is being read with permission from the publisher Kane Miller of England. England, fancy. Arnold's life was just right. His family loved him. They ate the nicest food and every day they played games down at the water hole. One day, a growling gang bounced by. It's a pink lion, they said, living with a lot of birds. What's he doing here? He's supposed to be a part of our family. I'm a lion, asked Arnold, puzzled. Yes, look at your face in the water, said one of the lions. It was true, they did look a lot alike. They had the same curly hair and whiskers. Could they really be related? Come along with us, said the lions. You should be out roaring and hunting. Arnold thought perhaps he should give it a try. This is how we hunt, said the lions, and off they raced. Arnold wasn't sure if he could run that fast. Next, some washing, said the lions. It's easy, just stick out your tongue and lick. Arnold wasn't used to the furry taste and he wished he had his soap and sponge. Being a lion was very different from life at home. Now let's roar, said the lions. All you do is open wide and let it out. Roar, roar, roar. Squark, said Arnold. I'm sorry, he said. You've been very kind, but I just can't do it. I'm not a proper lion. I think I'll go back to my family now. But when he got home, something terrible had happened. A very nasty crocodile had moved in. Oh no. Excuse me, said Arnold. This is our water hole? Not anymore, said the crocodile. It's time you and your feathery friends moved on. I live here now. Arnold didn't know what to say. He looked at the sky. He looked at the ground. And then a strange feeling like a hairy ball rose up from deep inside of him. Oh and burst out of his mouth with a mighty roar. Look at that crocodile. The other lions heard Arnold calling. Together, they chased that crocodile until he wished he had never seen the water hole. Roar! And Arnold's roar was the loudest and fiercest of all. After that, life for Arnold went back to being just right again. At bath time with his new cousins was more fun than ever. Oh, isn't that cute? The end. Now, I know this was about a pink lion who's adopted by some flamingos. Now we're gonna read about a different flamingo family. This is a brand new book. This is called, They're So Flamboyant. And it is by Michael Genhart and illustrated by Tony Neal. And what you need to know before we start this book is that a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. So you'll get it as soon as we start. So let's begin. When a flamboyance of flamingos flew into the neighborhood, a gaggle of geese gathered to gab. Flamingos, really, in our backyard? A Congress of Crows convened to caw. Well, there goes the neighborhood. And a dole of doves discussed their descent. Our peace has been totally disrupted. All the commotion caused a pandemonium of parrots. They are so pink. The charm of finches was not at all charmed. Their necks are so long. And the brood of chickens Locked and sighed, always preening, preening, preening. 
A scream of swifts shrieked, enough with the flamboyance. And the unkindness of ravens was just kind of unkind. Gawk, stay in your own neighborhood. Gawk. This is not very nice to these poor flamboyants of flamingos. The neighbors were so ruffled by the newcomers that a squadron of pelicans patrolled by day. First moving trucks and now food trucks. And by night, a watch of nightingales stayed alert. Don't flamingos ever sleep? Finally, the band of jays decided it was time for the neighbors to flock together. Uh oh. With tails unfurled, the pride of peacocks took the lead. And people think we're flamboyant. A waddle of penguins brought up the rear as a venue of vultures ventured over. If only we had legs like those flamingos. This is making us hungry. Leftovers, anyone? The mob of emus was ready for a fight. We can take them easy. The gulp of cormants gulped and then dove, ducking their dispute. Uh-oh, here we go. Suddenly, the front door swung wide open. Oh, what's gonna happen? But before any skirmish could start, the chime of rems chimed in. Stay calm. Thankfully, the wisdom of owls had the smarts to bring a heaping plate of algae for the new neighbors. Hmm, yum. Then the friendly flamboyance of flamingos exclaimed, come on in everyone, you're just in time for the party. Welcome to our home. Because when the flamboyance of flamingos flew into the neighborhood, everyone was welcome. Really a party just for us? How neighborly. Differences don't have to be scary. These are lovely. We raised the roof. We sure didn't see this coming. What were we getting so worked up about? Wow, didn't we jump to conclusions? The end. So I know that was a interesting book. It's brand new. You can come look at it here at the library. So a flamboyance of flamingos is a group of flamingos. And now we are going to make our own flamingo craft. So stay tuned. Let's go. Okay, so here is the final product of our flamingo craft. Let me show you how to make it. Stop by the library and pick up your craft bag. And in your craft bag, you will receive many things. You will receive, what's that? Some feathers, a pipe cleaner, a pink cotton ball, a neck, a head. I know it looks funky, but just go with me. A bag of flowers and some googly eyes. And you'll receive uh, this pre-measured little paper with its own border. And you will get some pink paint. You obviously will not get this whole thing. Uh, you'll get a little container of it. But I do want to talk to your adults about this paint first. This paint is acrylic and that means it will stain your clothes. So you want to make sure you are wearing a smock or PJs or clothes that your parents do not mind um, getting paint on them. And you should probably, probably put like newspaper down or something. The temper paint that came in pink, to be perfectly honest with you, um, just wasn't good quality for this project. It was too watery, just wasn't working out. And rather than give you substandard product, I decided everyone here is mature enough to do a little acrylic. So what you're going to do is, I know this is crazy because it's going on my hand. You are going to take some of the paint and you're going to take a Q-tip or something. I have this mesh brush here. You are going to paint it on your hand. Boop, boop, boop. You know I love a hand project. You wanna make sure you get it like on all, all 
the fingies, everything. Um, and you, whatever way you want the flamingo to go is the way that you are going to press it on the paper. So, boop, boop. You kind of have to work a little bit quickly so that you, you know, the paint doesn't dry right away on your hand, but here you go. And I know you guys are small, so you could do maybe one or two flamingos, but I have a big adult size hand, so my hand is just big enough to make one flamingo. So I am gonna press it on the paper. So if I go like this, the feathers are gonna go that way, all right? So you're gonna press it down, hold it on there for a second, make sure you get every finger going. And then you're gonna lift straight up. Don't move, you wanna lift it up. Ready? Wow, all right, there we go. Now you could, you know, bump it up a little. You could fill it in a little if you wanted, but there you go. I know I kind of have a long hand. That's kind of uh, flamingo shaped sort of. What we're going to do next is wash our hands. It's very important to wash your hands. So see how much paint is left because you don't want to get the leftover paint on the project. So get up, wash your hands, meet me back here. Okay, we're back. Our hands are clean, all washed. Great. So the next thing we're going to do while this paint is kind of drying is we are going to cut out our beak in our neck and head. So let's do that real quick. I know these shapes look a little funny and I've given you two different beaks because it depends on which way you put your hand. So move that aside and let's cut out our head and neck first. It can go either way and then we'll cut out our beak and then we're gonna glue those on the paper. Now, take your time, obviously. This is a good, fun craft to do on a rainy day, which I know we've had quite a few rainy days recently. Now, does anyone know why flamingos are pink? I will give you a hint. Shrimp are pink. And the flamingo only eats shrimp. So they eat shrimp and it turns their skin pink. Isn't that funny? I love that. So I'm gonna have my neck go this way, which means I'm gonna cut out this beak because it is all going in the same direction. Ba, ba, ba. Now there are some white flamingos. And I know you're saying, but Miss Bridget, you just said that flamingos were pink uh, because of all the shrimp they eat. And the white flamingos do eat shrimp, but they are extra special and they don't process that color, which is fun. All right, so we've got our head, we've got our little neck, back to our main little sheet here. So we are gonna pop our head on here and then we're gonna pop our beak on next. So we're gonna glue those on. Now remember this paint is still a little wet. That's okay, we just have to be careful. So let's glue these on real quick. As you know, I love a liquid glue. You don't need too much, but you can use some. There we go. So let's stick our little head on. Shroop. I know you're like, what about this? Don't worry. Calm down. It's fine. And then we're going to stick our beak on. It's down like that. Looking good. Looking good. Next up is the legs. Now, the legs are a little bit complicated. Nothing crazy. As a reminder, this is what it looks like at the end. So see how these legs are kind of crisscrossed? 
what we're actually going to do is we're going to take our pipe cleaner and we're just going to twist it in such a way and then we're going to glue it on our paper here so we're going to fold our pipe cleaner in half and then we're going to make it into a little triangle or like a four see boop 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 and then the bottom part curves up like a little foot and the bottom part curves down like a little foot. Now listen, you don't have to do it that way. That's just how I did it because I thought it looked cute. You can just do it two little sticks. It's up to you. This is your project. So I am gonna take some liquid glue, put it on here, stick it on there. Simple dimple as always. Once again, the glue stick, she ain't gonna work sis, she don't. So we're just gonna do a light little layer. And remember, if you use a lot of glue, it'll just take a long time to dry, but it will dry clear, so you should be fine. So it's all right if he pops off the page a little bit. I don't mind that at all. Actually, I think it's a pretty cute. So he's gonna go like this. You stick like that, no worries. I might put a little under the kneecap there. There we go, a little on the joints there. All good. Now, don't worry, cause this is all gonna get covered up by cotton balls and feathers and stuff. So you are all good. So next we're going to take our cotton ball and I like to fluff it up. And this is gonna be the body of our flamingo. It kind of mimics all the feathers because flamingos actually have two layers of feathers. They've got the feathers that you see and then they have an undercoat that helps wick away moisture because they live in very wet, mostly swampy areas. And unlike penguins, they are birds that fly. So we are going to fluff up our cotton ball. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can just do some of it. I like to kind of smush it up, make it like cotton candy. And then I'm just going to actually put the glue on the cotton ball, a thin layer. So everything on this is thin layers of glue because when it adds up, it becomes a thick layer, all right? Thin layer, smoosh it down, all right? Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. See, you're covering up all your bent legs and everything too. Hmm, kind of a chunky boy here. There we go. And I think my flamingo is a boy. Remember, just because things are pink doesn't mean it's for a girl. While that dries, I am going to I think put my Google eye on it here. I gave you two googly eyes. I'm just gonna use one because we're only seeing part of the face, but I'm going to, now these are sticky googly eyes, but you know, I love my glue. So just a little tip tap of glue there. We're gonna stick it on right there, I think. Cute. Very cute. Here we go. And we're gonna do our feathers. So everybody is going to get three or four feathers. You've got some light pink and you've got some dark pink. Uh, it's just luck of the draw. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit. As you know, a time on our tradition here at the Oak Brook Library and quite frankly, the world. So we're gonna take our glue and I think I'm gonna do the dark pink myself. Although, you know I love the light pink. And you can stick your feathers into the cotton ball or you can do it on the line of your fingers or you can do it around. Uh, I would suggest you take the feathers and have them go in the direction of your fingers that you've painted on here, no matter what direction that is. So I will also say, if you have a small hand, I've done my flamingo portrait, so hot dog style. If you have a small hand, you might wanna do your 
Flamingo's landscape, which is hamburger style. So all that to say, that's just a hot tip from me to you. I'm going to put some feathers. I'm going to put one here, I think, and one here, and I think one here. So we're going to smush those in. Put one there. I'm going to do one, maybe one like this. Have it stick out, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cute. Love that. Cute, cute. And then maybe I will use one light pink one. And I will do like this. Real long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks so cool. What a what a show girl. What a show piece this flamingo is. Alright, now the last thing that we're going to do is you got this whole bag of flowers. They're sticky foam flowers and you can put those anywhere you want around your flamingo or maybe just under the flamingo. It's really up to you. I am going to kind of just do it all around. Some of the flowers are like these. They're kind of like daisies. So there's an inside little part and then there's an outside and you can actually pop that inside part and mix and match the flowers, which I am going to do. And a lot of these flowers are neon colors, which as you know, neon, hot green is Miss Bridget's favorite color. Um, so we're really gonna lean into that as they say. So you can put these in a pattern or you can just sort of put them around. It's really up to you. I think I'm just going to do a couple. Now this is a project that is kind of heavy. So you're probably going to need to leave it overnight. Or at least for a little bit. Just a little bit. Then hang it on the fridge. Um, or you could, I don't know, mail it to your favorite aunt or, I don't know, give it to your teacher. Just be sure you take a picture of it and show us here at the library because you know we love to see your finished products. We always enjoy seeing them. Let's see, I think I'm going to do one more little inside and then be done. I thought these flowers were kind of groovy. And that is the theme of our story times this season. Make sure you tune in. Our next story time is going to be all about Earth Day. We love that. I'm going to do this here. Okay. So there's your finished product. Enjoy. Be sure to have a good time. Remember this paint is not washable so go wash your hands again thank you so much for coming to another virtual story team and craft with me miss bridget you can stop by the library starting today to pick up your craft kits to make your own flamingo craft or if you want to check out any of our books here at the library we are open please make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel follow us on all of our social media facebook twitter and instagram and we hope to see you next week for a very fun craft and story all about Earth Day. Bye-bye. Oh,